Okay, you wanna go racing? You're not sure if you're gonna like racing or not. You don't wanna invest a whole lot of money. Can it be done? Let's take a reasonable budget. Let's say $5,000. Can you go racing for $5,000? I'm gonna show you how you can do it. Let's do a series on how to build a budget race car. Now I'm gonna catch flack for that for that intro, budget race car. Everybody thinks it takes big money to go racing it. Not necessarily true. I'm gonna show you a formula I use to build cheap or budget race car. Now, first off, you have to have a really realistic expectation of what cheap is, and I'll probably do it cheaper than that. But I'm gonna show you a formula that I use and it's gonna require you to do a few things. One, you can't be you can't be pigeonholed into thinking I'm gonna build this specific car for this specific thing. You gotta be a little open-minded. And I'm gonna show you what I do. So first thing you do, you gotta pick a body. You gotta pick something. And this is how I pick a body for a cheap race car, something to go out and have fun with. Now, this is not gonna be a formula to get you on Street Outlaws TV show. This is not gonna be a formula to get you to race with John Force and none of those guys. This is to get you off the couch to your local track on the weekend and having fun. So here's the formula I use. First thing I do, hit marketplace, type in the word car. Now, everybody's got body styles they like or errors they like. Me, I like 60s cars. So. I narrow my search to 1960, 1970. Give me that 10 year window. And then I hit enter and I just start scrolling till I see a cheap price. I just done that in my local area. There is a 1961 Mercury Comet for $500. No, it doesn't run. It's a 1961 Mercury Comet for $500. It's actually fairly rust free for what it is. It's fairly rust free, no motor, no transmission, but it's a car, it's a complete car. So let's put that down. On All right. There. So now I have a 1961 Mercury Comet for $500. One of the first things I'm going to do is try to get my, my marker here. One of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this $500 Mercury Comet. Now I know some people are going to be like, I can't do that. And if you don't want to follow this exact formula, that's fine. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the trim. And here's why. The trim on these cars bring good money. So I'm gonna remove all the trim and I'm gonna put the trim back up for sale and I'm gonna recoup probably around $250. So I'm gonna recoup half my investment back. So now I have my car for $250. All right, so now I'm in and I have my 61 Mercury Comet. I have $250 in the car. All right, now what's next? Well, next, we're gonna wanna put, uh, we're gonna wanna put some type of motor in it. Again, this is where the brand loyalty thing will come in handy. Now I'm an FE guy, but FEs are expensive. It's expensive to build an FE to a certain point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back the marketplace we're going to type in the word engine and hit search so what we're looking for is not a race engine because well that number is going to be crazy what we're looking for is for this what i'm looking for for this car carbureted v8 smaller motor windsor small block chevy i i don't care freaking small block mopar i don't care but we're gonna scroll through and look. Now, I found, on Marketplace, I found a 351 Windsor. Supposedly, it was a running motor when it was pulled. Uh, I have a 351 Windsor that supposedly ran. So for the argument of this, we're going to pretend, because we don't know anything about this motor, but we're gonna pretend that this is an actual running motor, that this motor will actually start up and this motor will actually run. And it's just a bone stock 351 Windsor 
This thing supposedly has less than 100,000 miles on it. We're going to pretend all this information is true. The motor's $400. All right, so we're, we're at $400 on an engine. Let's, let's put this down. Okay, so now we've got our 351 Windsor, $400. That puts us at $650 total investment. Now, again, we're going to assume that the ad is honest and this is a good running motor. Now, we all know the world isn't perfect, but follow me for the basic math. We're gonna assume that this is a good running motor and we're gonna be in it for $400 and we're gonna be about $650 in. Now, let's look at a couple things we can Simplify do. Simplify our life and to make this easier to build on a budget, we've gotta minimize certain things, no computers, no uh, none of this stuff. So this is a fuel injected motor that's come out of a 95-ish, 96, somewhere in our truck. So. We're going to simplify our life and we're going to pull the fuel injection stuff off and we're going to put a carburetor on it so let's look at what we're going to do now now again follow me on the basic math of this this is what we're going to do so if i pull the fuel injection stuff off somebody out there somewhere has a problem so i'm going to remove the intake and all the injection stuff That's throttle body, that's everything. I'm gonna put that back on Marketplace and I'm gonna try to sell the whole shebang, the whole shooting match for $100. All right, this motor was complete. Somebody out there has a crack metal. I've sold manifolds and stuff. So we're gonna sell the, the manifolds. This is exhaust manifolds. We're gonna sell those for, let's say 50 bucks. All right. Now keep in mind, I've been doing this stuff for like 30 years. I, I have a pretty good idea of a ballpark stuff I can get out of. This is not gonna be overnight. So that means we have just recouped $150. We just got $150 back. So now our $650 build, take away $150 there. We're at, now we're at, stop my board from moving we're at five hundred dollars so right now we're almost back to the original cost of just the car so now we're in our we're in our race car for five hundred dollars now we need a transmission so now we need a transmission there's only two ways you can go you gotta go automatic or you gotta go manual i'm a manual guy i love four speed cars i love four speed racing I'm all about four speeds. There's two ways to go about this. Transmission, you gotta put some money into. There's no cheap way of going about it. If you go automatic, you've got a couple of choices. You can try to find one from some guy that will tell you it's good. And for this build, we're 351, we would probably go C4. They're readily available and they're not expensive. So we'd go that route. For manual, honestly, I'm gonna go top loader every time. A little pricey, but that's the way I'm gonna go. The majority of you guys will probably wanna go automatic. So I'm gonna dig around and see what I can find an automatic for I know because I've went through it recently about what it will cost to build a good transmission uh, not over crazy not over not not anything just exorbitant but there's transmission guys out there that will build you a strong transmission not technically a race transmission but a good strong street transmission that will handle more power than what we're going to make with this 351 and you can get in those for about a thousand dollars the the transmission is money there's no way we can get around the money part of the transmission so we're going to spend about a thousand dollars on transmission now if i went top loader i'd search around do a little horse trading and all i could probably still get into one for about a thousand dollars uh or less so either way we're going to use the number thousand dollars for a transmission all right so let's put that in our little budget right here transmission and we're 
we'll put a thousand dollars. So that brings our grand total up now to fifteen hundred dollars that we're in this car. All right, so now we're fifteen hundred dollars in. What else do we need? So now we're gonna get into meat and potatoes of the things. The things that really cost money and the things that <clears throat> we can do. Now this is assuming that you have absolutely nothing and you're starting from scratch. Me, as you can see, I've got a building full of stuff. So uh, my Galaxy, for instance, the last few races that I ran before I built my, before my parts were here to build my new motor, um, the motor I ran in it for the last two races of last season and the first two races of this season, I had $150 in that motor. It was making making respectable passes. Uh, this is a 4,000 pound car. I had a $150 motor and I was running low eights in it. So it can be done cheap, but we're gonna assume that you have nothing and you're starting from scratch. So there's things you need to do. One, we need a good ignition system. You can't skimp, I've tried. I mean, if you see what I'm doing, I have tried to skimp on ignition. You need a good ignition system. Nothing you can do about it. You gotta have it. We sold our intake and stuff, remember? So now we need an intake and a carburetor. Those can be bought used. You gotta learn how to rebuild a carburetor and you gotta learn how to tune a carburetor. That's on you, that's not on me. So those can be bought used. Let's put that stuff on paper. All right, so we've bought an MSD, we bought a used intake, used carburetor and rebuild kit for the carburetor. <clears throat> Add all that stuff together with our $1,500 that we're already invested, and we're up to about $2,550. Now, all this stuff can be found on Marketplace. The only thing that I would buy new is the MSD system or the one of your choice, but I chose to go for the example of this as a standalone MSD, and we're going to come out to about $2,550 is what we're into it now. So, now we have a car, we have a motor and transmission. It's in the car and now we have a running motor and transmission sitting in a car so now we've got to address the cooling system we got to address the fuel system and uh let, let's let's focus on those two first if you're racing on a budget use the stock tank in the what did we buy we bought a comet use the stock tank in the comet it will work. So we're gonna to have to invest in a fuel pump. Now, you can find Holly fuel pumps on Marketplace. Take it for what it's worth. You can find them on Marketplace for about a hundred bucks. Cooling system, there is a company on eBay. They are a knockoff of Be Cool. I think they're called Stay Cool or something along those lines. Basically sell the exact same radiator. I'm running one in the Galaxy. They are freaking nuts, dirt cheap. The one I got for the Galaxy, I paid $120 for it. That's shipped to my door. Never had an issue out of it. So we're gonna figure, we'll have about $120 in the cooling system, figure it the same as Galaxy, and we'll figure about $100 in the fuel system. All right, so now, whoa, red. We're gonna do the aluminum one and that's uh, $120. All right, let's do a Holly fuel pump. And let's say we can get into that for around $100. All right, so now we've got another $220. And that is added to our $25.50. So I'm trying to do this while looking through a camera. This is not that easy. 25, 50 that we already have here. Uh, so, oops. So 70, 7, 27, 70 is what we're into this car for now. All right. Now let's start making some money back real quick. The great thing about this particular Comet that I picked is Ford 9H rear end. So easy to get parts for but we want to go quick. The way you make a slow car go quick, or as quick as you can, is with a lot of gear. Now, since we don't know yet what our, what RPM 
the engine would be happy at. We're not going to try to over rev it. So let's go at, take in consideration most all the tracks in my area are all eighth mile. So you're going eighth mile racing. So let's go with like a 456 gear. And uh, let's go with let's go with a mini spool because they're cheap. You get a mini spool brand new from Summit for like 100 bucks. 456 gears. I would search marketplace and find a set of used gears. As long as they don't have a chip tooth or not ground down, you can look at something and tell when it's good or not. You can find 456 gears for. I, what did I give for mine? I think. I think I'm. I've got a set of 456 here. I got a set of 488s here. I got I got several sets of gears. I think I generally give somewhere around 150 bucks for a good gear set used. So if we're doing a new mini spool and a used gear set, we're in about another 250 bucks. Right, so let's do rear gear and we said we could find a used one for about 150 dollars. Uh, and we'll do a a mini spool and they're around a hundred dollars all right so now we're another 250 dollars but you have a gear in the back of your car somebody out there is doing a restoration or they're trying to make one more gas friendly right now so you can take that 308 gear that's in the back of that i'm assuming it's 308 and you can put it online and get another hundred bucks for that so uh, let's put old gear and we're going to recoup a hundred bucks. So now we're at 150 bucks into all that plus our 2770 that we're already in here. So now we're at 2920 into our race car so we're at $2,900 into our race now car. guys i know there's a bunch of stuff where, that that won't get covered just because it's hard to think about everything as you're going and there's gonna be money to spend that really isn't thought about right now but we have a car we have a motor and transmission and then we have a rear end under it we have a cooling system we have a fuel system so again we're building a race car here we're not trying to build something on a car show so next we probably want a set of good shocks i want a budget i do some competition engineering on the front the three-way adjustables set them on a 9010 you can find those all day for around 100 bucks used and they're fine uh people that think you want a race car and don't they pull them off some you can find them all day for around 100 bucks so that's fine for that. Now on the back, on the back, I, I, I'm, I'm not, on the back, I'm going to put something like a Viking adjustable coilover on the back. I just am. Because I want the back to plant the tires. I want it to work. I want the rear suspension to work. And these cars are, those cars are least sprung. So helping plant the tires and helping the rear end work, I'm going to put a Viking coilover on the back. You're going to have to look around and shop around, but you can probably get into that about $300. So now we're $400 into shocks. So, say shocks, we're going to go $400 into shocks to go with our 2920 that we're in here. So now we're at 3320. You're gonna want, the cheapest thing you can do, and I'm gonna catch slack for this, is old school slapper bars. For help. That, I'm gonna catch slack for that, but that's the cheapest thing you can do. And again, we're trying to do this on a budget. And you can find those everywhere, all day, twice a day for a hundred bucks. So, now we're at 34, 20. All right, so now we're at $3,420.
and you have a complete car that runs and drives now. No, you don't. We didn't talk about drive shafts. Since this car doesn't have a motor and transmission, we're gonna assume there's no drive shaft. And if there is, you'll probably have to have one custom cut. I happen to know exactly what that costs because I've had many of them cut and kind of a custom made drive shaft, Ralph, ready to go, 300 bucks. I do, I do it a lot with drive shafts. So 300 bucks in a drive okay, shaft. So now we've got our drive shaft down 300 bucks to our 3420. Now we're 3720 into our cheap race car. At this point, you have to decide what you want to do. This is the moment you've got to put some thought into some things. You have two choices. You can take this combination, 351, what do we put in this thing? 456 gear, 456 gear, automatic, um, eighth mile. You should be able to run low sevens. You should be able to. That's not crazy fast, but depending on what you're gonna do, that's fine. Now. You have a choice here. You can get a hundred shot of nitrous with a plate system going to your carburetor and a good uh, uh, anti-scatter guard <laughs> controller uh, so you can ramp it in and uh, not scatter the guts out of this unknown motor. And you could probably spray this thing into mid sixes. But let's don't go there for the sake of we're trying to build on a budget. That gives you some word that you can go above this. So, and we'll get to that part in a minute. Just stay with me. Stay with me. I know some people are right now melting down because of the way I'm putting this car together. But stay with me. So we need a set of uh, we need a set of slicks now. With that comment, you're not going to be able to put a big tire under the back of it. You're just not. You can probably get a 28.9 under the back of that thing. In this area, they're pretty common. And you can find a good set of used ones that have low passes on them, two or three passes on them or something. You can find a set of used ones in this area. I've bought many of them for around 150 bucks for a pair. So let's put that on there because we, we need slicks. So let's put a $150 pair. So of now slicks. we're at 38.70. Now we need some type of exhaust and you can buy uh, you can buy headers online, dirt cheap, uh, especially for a small Ford. I know that because right there is a set of 351 Windsor headers that, uh, a set of 351 headers that I get 50 bucks for. So we're going to say headers, 50 bucks. I think my math is right. I'm sure if it's not, somebody's gonna tell me. But, so now we're at 39.20. All right, so we're at 39.20 now. We have exhaust, we have slicks. Uh, we have pretty much everything ready to go. I am gonna spend the money on a set of because the car's not fast enough in the cage the car's not fast enough to do any of that i'm going to spend the, the money on a set of uh lap belts now they do make racing lap belts before anybody chimes in you can find them at summit you can find them anywhere they're around 100 bucks um some are a little less some are a little more um so now we're at four thousand and twenty dollars we're at four thousand and twenty dollars Let's add a tank of fuel and call it $4,050. Now there's a lot of stuff that we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about any kind of wiring. The car should have wiring. We didn't talk about front tires we didn't talk about brakes we didn't talk about any of that stuff and honestly 
you can spend all the money you want to spend. If you want to keep changing stuff, you can keep spending, keep spending, keep spending. That car right there, that 63 Galaxy right there, is pretty freaking quick. It's got a FE in it. It's a four-speed car. And I've been racing it for a while. It's actually quicker than it shows at the track. I've been faster locally than I have been uh, on some of the races that we've been to. I'm still running factory drum brakes all the way around it. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You just have to understand limits and know where they go. All the tracks we go to have way more shutdown room than I need to. We have plenty of shutdown room in most of the tracks we go to. So I don't need a thousand dollar set of front brakes on it to help it or anything like that. I don't need a parachute on it, but I don't need none of that stuff. Um, so there is more money that can be spent this gets you to the track. So let's look at a couple things here. On this list, we bought a junker car and we built a car to take to the racetrack. And all together, we had $4,050 in the car. Is that gonna be a world record setting car? No. Are you gonna break land speed records in that car? No. My guesstimation, the way that car sits, you're probably gonna run mid to low sevens. Take it to your local bracket races. They'll probably have classes for for several different ones. Uh, I don't know if they'll have one, but for instance, say if this car is consistently a 750 car, they have 750 classes. But say this car runs seven seconds, you can still run a 750 class. You just have to, you, you just have to not go all in if you know what I mean. What I'm saying is, and, and I'm not saying this is uh, what everybody thinks of when they think of race car. This probably isn't. What I'm saying is, this gets you started. This gets you a race car so you can get to the track and have fun. This puts you out there. This gets you off the couch and gets you to having fun. It does not take a bunch of money. Now, you'll hear everybody talk about speed costs money, speed costs money. Well, sure, everything costs money. Hell, I think a gas costs money. But here's the thing. This gets you to the track. This gets you out there having fun. And if you haven't raced before and you're trying to get started, honestly, you want something like this to get started. You don't want to jump in a 1,000 horsepower car for the first time you ever make a pass. You want something that you can, you can grow with. Now, this is the basic blueprint to a good start. Now, what you can do with this car is a year down the road, you save up some money, and maybe you swap out the heads for several aluminum heads on this motor uh, and put a different cam in it, but leave the bottom in like it is. Still more budget, now you've gained a little more and the car's gotten a little faster. You can grow with the car. You and the car can grow together. Uh, uh, later on down the road, maybe you decide to go buy a blueprint engine, race engine, you know, some kind of our six, seven hundred horsepower, whatever they are. I don't even know a uh, crate engine to drop in it. Now you've moved up and you went faster. Now, as you go faster, you need to do a few other things. Maybe you want to start adding cow track bars to the back of it instead of slapper bars and spend a little money. Maybe you want to upgrade to a better suspension. Maybe some, uh, maybe some Calvert shocks on the front instead of the competition engineering. But what I'm saying is, of course, you can go up from here. And of course, you can make the car go faster. Maybe you want to put a twin turbo LS in it later down the road somewhere. That's all on you. What I'm doing is giving you a basic blueprint to show you that you don't have to have a massive amount of money to go racing. And if you've never raced before, honestly, you need to start Kind of just getting your feet wet getting into it it'll get you a love for the sport and it'll get it'll it, it'll let you know if you're meant for it because if it fuels your passion to want to put a little more into the car and a little more into the car and a little more into the car that's what it is but if you go out and you absolutely hate it and racing's not for you you've got a 60 what do we do a 61 you've got a 61 mercury comet that you have four thousand dollars in and it runs and drives dude you can sell that car for seven eight thousand without blinking an eye because it's a running driving classic car so what i'm saying is by doing it this way it allows you 
to decide if you like this. Because if you like this, then you can make the car grow. If you get into this and this is not for you, you can sell the car, you can get your money back, plus some money, and you got to have some fun doing it. It does take time. You've got to search around and find the right deal. You get invested for not a ton of money. What I'm saying, guys, is get out there and have fun and, and enjoy life. It is way too short not to get out and have fun in. The other thing you're going to hear is people are going to say, well, you didn't figure in your time. Your time is worth money. Not if you want to go racing cheap, it ain't. The time is the only thing you've got that you can spend on it. So if you want to go racing cheap, then you better be willing to spend your time. You got to spend one or two things. You got to spend time or you got to spend money. And you got to figure out which one of those you're willing to uh, invest. Time, I've, we've all got, we've all got a limited number of time, a limited amount of time. But time is something that I have more of than I have money. I hope, Lord willing. Uh, and I'm, I, I can invest my time. What I'm saying is, you can get to the track without spending crazy amounts of money. It's all in willing to do a few things. One, you have to swallow your pride and understand that you're not going to be John Forrest, Ryan Martin, or any of these guys uh, with no money. You got to swallow your pride. You're not going to be those guys. You also have to understand at the same time that's not the only kind of racing there is in the world. That there is bracket races and stuff at your tracks every weekend. There's there's Friday night testing tunes where people bring bringing street cars out there and you can run heads up and outrun most of them or outrun part of them anyway the point of racing is to go have fun if you're racing for money and racing to see what you can how much money you can get from it you, you've, you've lost the point it's supposed to be fun so do you change your mindset to realize that it's all about fun that you can't win everything. And that honestly, sorry, racing's not meant for everybody. Once you get those things in your head, then you can understand that you can build something like this little Mercury Comet and go have fun. You can go out to the racetrack on a Friday or a Saturday, set you up a pit spot, put a grill out there, throw hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill, go make passes and passes, hang out with people you meet at the racetrack and absolutely have a great time for no money. Most of these tracks, if you do it on a Friday night, it's like $20, $25 to get in. I mean, let's say you spend a hundred bucks fuel to get there and entry fee and all that stuff. You set up a grill, grease some hamburgers, you make three or four passes throughout the night, you meet new friends, Y'all hang out, and here's the great thing. When you meet those new friends, you'll have somebody that comes by and looks at your Mercury Comet with your old 351 in it, and they'll go, hey, man, I've got a, uh, I've got an old cam laying around for a 351. What good my, in my car? You want it? You know how many parts on this car was given to me? That comes from spending time at the track. So you will grow, and also what you'll do is you'll walk up on that guy and goes, Hey man, I had one of those back in the day, and this is what we used to do to make you run fast. And you will gain so much knowledge just by being part of the show. Man, don't let people lie to you until you can't afford to go to a track. Don't let people lie to you until you can't afford to go racing. Go to your local track on a Friday night or a Saturday night. Go to your local drag strip on a Friday or Saturday night and look at what's out there. Yeah, there'll be two or three guys that are really fast out there, but the majority of them really ain't. The majority of them are just guys wanting to have fun. Don't let the world lie to you, folks. This is how you build a cheap race car. This is how you go out and have fun. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll do more stuff, but I'm telling you, you can go racing for cheap. Don't let anybody lie to you. I'm living proof of it. Till next time, God bless y'all.